Hello aspirants, welcome to Shankar's Summary 2024. In this particular video, we are going to cover Geography Part 1 from June 2023 to October 2023. In this, we are going to see only the important topics which were in the current affairs so that it will be easy for you to revise for your upcoming prelims. So, just go through the video and uh, leave your comments in the comment section. Now, we shall move on to the first question. This question asks you to find which of the following best describes the term blue ocean event. Correct answer for this question is the occurrence of an open water area in the Arctic Ocean during the summer months devoid of sea ice. See this blue ocean event usually occurs when the area of multi-year sea ice falls below 1 million square kilometer. During such a phenomenon, the Arctic will appear blue instead of its characteristic white color due to the lack of ice. This is why the phenomenon is named as blue ocean event here you might have a doubt what is this multi-year sea ice as you all know the volume of sea ice in the arctic region varies with season especially the volume of sea ice in the arctic become very minimal around september each year the ice which remains at the end of summer is called multi-year sea ice this multi-year sea ice is thicker than other seasonal ice and it plays an important role in combating climate change due to its thickness the multi-year sea ice acts as a barrier to the transfer of both moisture and heat between the ocean and the atmosphere and it helps in preventing the positive feedback loop here a positive feedback loop is nothing but a self-reinforcing cycle where the initial change leads to additional change that further amplify the original change if you are confused about what is this positive feedback loop look at this image as you all know when global temperature rises arctic sea ice melts at an accelerated rate this reduction in ice coverage exposes a large area of dark open water open water has a lower albedo or low reflectivity compared to ice so what happens as the ice melts and exposes more water a positive feedback loop begins so here the darker water absorbs more light instead of reflecting it back into space and this leads to increased heating of the arctic region the increased absorption of sunlight by the open water causes the arctic region to warm further this warming not only accelerates the initial melting of sea ice but also has broader impacts on the global ecosystem so this is what the positive feedback loop actually means so these are certain facts that you have to recall with respect to blue ocean event with these learned points now let us move on to the next question moving on look at this particular question see here the question asks you to find the incorrect statement here the first statement is alone incorrect except that other two statements are correct so the correct answer for this question is option a one only i asked this particular question because the term atlantification of the arctic ocean was in the news frequently for those who don't know atlantification refers to the increase in the influence of atlantic warm waters over the different arctic seas this primarily occurs due to the change in the arctic dipole here the arctic dipole is nothing but the pressure pattern that exists over the arctic ocean since 2007 the arctic region has been under the influence of a positive arctic dipole to have a better understanding just have a look at this image remember during the positive dipole the high pressure will be over the canadian sector of the arctic and the low pressure will be over the siberian canadian sector of the arctic so during a positive arctic dipole the canadian sector produces clockwise winds and the siberian sector produces counterclockwise winds similarly the ocean currents also moves from the siberian sector to the canadian sector that is the water moves in the westward direction so this helps the warm water of the siberian sector to move towards the canadian sector since there is high pressure over the canadian sector the warm water has a lesser impact on the melting of ice so since 2007 the positive arctic dipole has favored the westward movement of the fresh water it helped to slow the overall loss of sea ice in the arctic as a result the depth of the fresh water ice has increased along the arctic also the ice was too thick and stable remember there is another warm ocean current that comes from the atlantic ocean it flows into the bottom of the arctic ocean 
through from strait despite it is too warm the already existing thick layer of fresh water prevents the warm salt water of atlantic ocean from melting arctic sea ice from the bottom but now there is a problem the scientists are saying that there might be a reversal in arctic dipole from positive to negative dipole see the reversal in dipole is a normal phenomenon and it is said that the arctic dipole reverses once every 15 years but if the arctic dipole gets a reversed it increases the atlantification effect this means that the warm saltier water from the atlantic ocean will exaggerate the melting of arctic ice this is because during a negative dipole the low pressure is experienced over the canadian sector of the arctic ocean and high pressure is experienced in the siberian sector so the ocean current moves from the canadian sector to the siberian sector that is the water moves in the eastward direction already there exist warm water in the siberian sector so the eastward movement of water could intense the temperature and affect the ice formation in the arctic ocean in this situation the warmer atlantic water exaggerates the melting of the arctic ice so the negative arctic dipole condition favors the atlantic warm waters to influence the arctic water this is what the term atlantification and the arctic dipole means so the correct answer for this particular question is option a one only because the question ask you to find only the incorrect statement first statement is alone incorrect actually the negative phase only has low pressure over canadian arctic and the high pressure over the siberian arctic look at this question on one side countries are given and on the other side the reasons why they were in news are given you have to find how many pairs given here is or are correct see here the correct answer for the question is option c all the four all the four pairs are correctly matched Sudan was in news for the imposition of US sanctions on two individuals belonging to a paramilitary group named Rapid Support Force RSF as you all know Sudan is currently under a military coup so to put off the crisis the US and Saudi brokered a ceasefire arrangement between two leaders that is between the civilian government of Sudan and the RSF despite these peace efforts air strikes were conducted by the preparators and it killed around 18 civilians of sudan as a result the us has announced sanctions on the two sudan paramilitary group leaders that is why sudan was in news remember united states can impose sanctions not only on the country but also on the individuals who involve in human rights abuse corruption terrorism and other illicit activities these sanctions may involve freezing assets restricting travel or prohibiting financial transactions with the targeted individuals then serbia and kosovo were in the news for the recent protest by the local serbians in the kosovo region the core of the issue lies in kosovo's declaration of independence from serbia in 2008 which serbia does not recognize kosovo's independence has been acknowledged by a significant number of countries including the united states but but serbia maintains its claim over the territory the presence of serb majority area within kosovo adds another layer of complexity to the situation so nato led peacekeepers were employed to contain the protest happening there that is why serbia and kosovo was in news then the nagorno karabakh issue is a long standing conflict between armenia and azerbaijan over the nagorno karabakh region See the issue here is by the end of 1920 Armenia and Azerbaijan joined the Soviet Union at the time Stalin placed the region of Nagorno Karabakh into Azerbaijan this Nagorno Karabakh region is an ethnic Armenian dominated region but it is in Azerbaijan now this ethical difference is the major cause for the conflict finally Gabon was in the news for the military coup interesting fact is that This is the eighth coup in former French colonies in Africa in the past 3 years. Before that political instabilities happened in Mali, Guinea, Senegal, Niger and etc. So here the correct answer for the question is option C all four. Moving on three statements about Indian Ocean dipole is given and you have to find how many statements given here is or are correct. Before that let us see what is an Indian Ocean dipole. See in physics a dipole is a pair of equal and oppositely charged or magnetic poles separated by a distance. Similarly IOD is defined by the difference in sea surface temperature between two areas. 
here we are talking about the arabian sea which is on the western coast of india and the bay of bengal which is on the eastern side of india see whenever arabian sea has warmer sea surface temperature when compared to the bay of bengal we call it as positive iod and the negative iod is the opposite of this here you might have a doubt how one side of the ocean along the equator gets warmer than the other see usually the air circulation in the indian ocean basin moves from west to east that is from the african coast towards the indonesian islands near the surface and in the opposite direction at the upper level that means the surface water in the indian ocean gets pushed from west to east so in a normal year warmer water in the western pacific near indonesia crosses over into the indian ocean and makes that part of the indian ocean slightly warmer this causes the air to rise and help the prevailing air circulation now this is the normal phenomenon but in the years when the air circulation becomes stronger more warm surface water from the african coast are pushed towards the indonesian islands making that region warmer than usual this causes more hot air to rise and the cycle reinforces itself this is the state of negative iod the opposite case involves air circulation becoming slightly weaker than normal in some rare cases the air circulation even reverses direction so the consequence is that the african coast becomes warmer while the indonesian coast gets cooler this is the positive iod now coming back to the question see as given in the first statement of the question an iod phenomenon can influence an el nino's impact on the monsoon See a positive IOD event is often seen developing at times of an El Nino while a negative IOD is sometimes associated with La Nina. As you all know India experiences below average rainfall during most El Nino years but when positive IOD and El Nino combines they exert an offsetting impact on India's summer monsoon that is when El Nino tends to lower the rainfall a positive IOD increases the rainfall the opposite happens during negative IOD in very simple terms even during El Nino years if positive IOD is there then India will receive good train for so here the correct answer for the question is option b only two statements because the third statement is incorrect and the first two statements are correct moving on here three statements are given and you have to find the correct statements see the correct answer for this question is option d 2 and 3 only first statement is actually incorrect if you can eliminate the first statement you can easily arrive at the answer now i am talking a lot about elimination technique even after being surprised by seeing the 2023 prelims paper because upsc might go back to the old model and surprises again in 2024 also that is why i am talking about the elimination technique here the goal of the discussion is to provide you with adequate information so that you can apply it in the prelims and score marks okay now coming back here the first statement says according to geological survey of india roughly 50 percentage of countries landmass is prone to landslides this statement is an very extreme statement according to the survey only 15 percentage of the country's region is prone to landslides you can see that in this image the himalayas of northwest and northeastern india and the western ghats are two regions of high vulnerability now here you have to understand a sharp difference between landslides land slips and land subsidence the main difference between a landslip and a landslide is that a landslip is a slow continuous movement of materials down a slope while a landslide is a sudden rapid movement of materials down a slope on the other hand land subsidence is defined as a gradual settling or sudden sinking of the earth's surface due to removal or displacement of subsurface earth materials here the term subsurface refers to the area below the surface of the earth so the displacement of these subsurface earth materials will lead to land subsidence example for the land subsidence is the joshimath incident so here the first statement is incorrect the second statement says monitoring of snow accumulation and avalanche early system is carried out by the snow and avalanche study establishment this statement is actually correct it is actually a laboratory located in manali of himachal pradesh it is under defense research and development organization drdo to study vulnerable upper reaches of himalayas so second statement is actually correct 
Now the third statement says the Agro Meteorological Advisory Services is operated to prepare bi weekly weather based bulletins. This statement is also correct. Actually, the Gramin Krishi Mausam Seva it has been implemented by the Indian Meteorological Department in collaboration with the state agricultural universities or Indian Council of Agricultural Research. The main aim of this scheme is to issue crop and location specific weather based agricultural advisories for the benefit of the farming community. The Agro Meteorological Advisory Service AAS under GKMS are conducted to prepare bi weekly weather based bulletin. So, here the correct answer for the question is option D 2 and 3 only. First statement is incorrect. Moving on, here three statements about Indian ports are given and you have to find which of the statements given is or are correct. See, actually the correct answer for this particular question is option C 1 and 3 only. Statement 2 is incorrect. Paradwip is in Odisha. It is especially designed to export iron ore to Japan. So, the second statement is actually wrong. Kandla, it is a seaport situated at the head of the Gulf of Kutch in Gujarat state. It was the first port to be developed after independence. It has a free trade zone and it is a tidal port. Then the Haldia, it is a riverine port on the bank of river Hooghly. Its main purpose is to reduce congestion on Calcutta port. Then talking about the Calcutta port, it is also a riverine port and it suffers from many drawbacks like silting, sandy bars and islands that have formed at several places. Moving on, Chennai is the oldest artificial harbour in India. If you know the difference between an artificial port and a natural port, you can leave that in the comment section. Then in Noor, it has been recently developed to reduce the load on the Chennai port. So remember totally there are 12 major ports in India. You can see that in the image given here. Apart from this, there are more than 200 intermediate and minor ports operating in nine coastal states of India. They are administered by the respective ministries of the state government. So the correct answer for this particular question is option C1 and 3 only. Look at this question. One assertion is given and a reason is given. You have to find whether both the statements are true or not. See here the correct answer for the question is option A. Both assertion and reason are true and reason is the correct explanation of assertion. As you all know thunderstorms are caused by intense convention on moist hot days. The assertion part is actually correct. A thunderstorm is a well grown cumulonimbus cloud producing thunder and lightning. So the reason part is also correct. Remember when the clouds extend to heights where sub-zero temperature prevails, hail are formed and they come down as hailstorms. If there is a condition like insufficient moisture, then a thunderstorm can generate dust storms as well. Remember a thunderstorm is characterized by intense updraft of rising warm air which causes the clouds to grow bigger and rise to height. This causes precipitation. Later, downdraft brings down to earth the cool air and the rain. From severe thunderstorms, sometimes spiraling wind descends like a trunk of an elephant with great force with very low pressure at the center causing massive destruction on its way. Such a phenomenon is called a tornado. Tornado generally occur in middle latitude. When the tornado occur over the sea, it is called water spouts. So in essence, remember a thunderstorm is a rain bearing cloud that can produce lightning. Since lightning is the source of thunder, thunder can be heard during any thunderstorm. Thunderstorm can be accompanied by destructive downburst, heavy rainfall and hail and they can even develop into tornado with severe weather conditions. The only three ingredients that must be present for a thunderstorm to occur includes moisture, instability and lifting. And if these three ingredients are accompanied by wind shear, which is the fourth ingredient, there will be a severe thunderstorm leading to tornado. So these are all certain facts that you have to remember about thunderstorms. So the correct answer for this particular question is option A. Moving on, look at this question about South China Sea dispute. See, UPSC is asking questions related to this topic frequently for the past years. Some of the examples are given here. So let us first understand 
the dispute and try to solve this particular question. Now look at this image. Here you can see the location of the South China Sea. See, South China Sea is a sea located in the western part of the Pacific Ocean, bordering the eastern part of Southeast Asia and the southeast part of East Asia. Major countries located adjacent to South China Sea are Vietnam, China, Philippines, Brunei and Malaysia. Here note that Indonesia also lies near the outer border of the South China Sea. Remember, it is connected by Taiwan Strait with the East Asia. China Sea and by Luzon Strait with the Philippine Sea. See this South China Sea has very strategic importance because it connects Indian Ocean and the Pacific through the Strait of Malacca and nearly one third of the global shipping passes through it. Apart from this large resources of oil and natural gas has been discovered under the flows of South China Sea. Due to these reasons the region remains a significant geopolitical water body. Now look at this image the pink colored area of South China Sea, which is highlighted here in the image, is claimed by China. It is citing various historical reasons. But if you pay close attention, you can see that the area claimed by China nearly includes all of the territorial waters of countries like Vietnam and Philippines. Now, this is the core issue. The Paracel Island or claimed by China, Taiwan and Vietnam. The Spratly Islands or claimed by China, Taiwan, Vietnam, Brunei and the Philippines. And the Scarbo Sol is claimed by Philippines, China and Taiwan. So this is all about the dispute. Now coming back to the question, now even though Indonesia borders the South China Sea, it is not part of the South China Sea dispute. So the correct answer for the question is option C, 1, 2 and 3 only. Moving on, look at this particular question about flash floods. See here, the correct answer for this question is option C. Flash floods are characterized by rapid onset and shift moving water, often resulting from intense rainfall over a short duration. In other words, the simple accepted definition is flash floods or floods caused by excessive rainfall within a short duration of less than 6 hours. This flood will happen within hours of heavy rainfall or other intense water accumulation events like a glacial outburst, cloud burst and etc. So what are the reasons for the flash floods? See the main factor is very heavy rain but the inherent physical factors like steepness of terrain, the nature of the soil etc. also increases the risk of flash floods. In urban area the presence of man-made structures, encroachments then choked drainage can impede the water flow and cause urban flash floods. Remember various other factors like dam failure, ice jam or sudden release of water from natural reservoirs due to any mismanagement may also cause flash floods. Also remember, flash floods are accompanied by landslides which are sudden movements of a rock or debris down a slope. So it is common in mountain terrains which often leads to destruction of life and property. So these are certain facts that you have to remember about the flash floods. Flash floods was also in the news frequently. So the correct answer for this particular question is option C. Moving on, look at this question. This question asks you to find which of the above are the tributaries of Krishna. See, the correct answer for this question is option A, 1, 2, and 4 only. Indravati and Venkanga are tributaries of Godavari, not Krishna. Now, I asked this question because Godavari and Krishna rivers were frequently in use due to heavy rain and floods, especially during the monsoon season. Apart from being in use, knowing about these facts is very important from the static part. Every year, you will get a question from rivers topic. It can be either from Indian rivers or it can be from the world rivers. You can see some of the previous year questions given here. All these insist us to revise the topic. So let us see some of the facts about the peninsular rivers. See as you all know the Godavari is the largest peninsula river system. It is also called as Dakshin Ganga. It rises in the Nasik district of Maharashtra and discharges its water into the Bay of Bengal. Its tributaries run through the states of Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Odisha and Andhra Pradesh. The Penganga, the Indravati, Pranahita and Manjra are its principal tributaries. Remember, the Godavari is subjected to heavy floods in its lower reach to the south of Polavaram where it forms a picturesque gorge. If you know what is a gorge, leave it in the comment section. Remember, the Godavari River is navigable only in the delta stretch. The river after Rajmandri splits into several branches forming a large delta. So this is about Godavari River drainage system. 
Now talking about the Krishna, it is the second largest east flowing peninsula river. It rises in Mahabaleshwar in Shayantri. The Koena, Tungabhatra and Bhima are its major tributaries. Of its total catchment area, the Krishna river flows through Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Moving to Kaveri, it rises in Brahmagiri hills of Kodagu district in Karnataka. Remember this fact, since the upper catchment area of Kaveri river receives rainfall during the southwest monsoon season, that is during the summer, and the lower part receives rainfall during the northeast monsoon season, that is during the winter, the river carries water throughout the year with comparatively less fluctuation than the other peninsula rivers but still sharing its water is a problem remember about three percentage of the kaveri basin falls in kerala 41 percentage falls in karnataka 56 percentage falls in tamil nadu and some of its important tributaries include kabini Bhavani and Amravati. It drains into Bay of Bengal. Apart from this, Narmada, Tapi and Luni are very important peninsula rivers. Narmada originates on the western flank of the Amarkantak Plateau at a height of about 1057 meter. It flows in a rift valley between the Satpura in the south and the Vindhya Ranges in the north. And the famous Sardar Sarovar project has been constructed on this river only. The Tapi is other important west flowing river it originates from Maltai in the Betul district of Madhya Pradesh. It flows through Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat and drains into the Arabian Sea. Then finally the Luni River. It is the largest river system of Rajasthan. It originates near Pushkar in two branches that is Saraswati and Sabarmati which joins with each other at Govind Kark. From here the river comes out of Aravalli and is known as Luni. It flows towards the west till Telvara and then takes a southwest direction to join the Ran of Kutch. The entire river system is ephemeral. Ephemeral means lasting a very short time. So these are all certain important peninsula rivers that you have to revise. So the correct answer for this question is option A, 1, 2 and 4 only. Moving on, look at this question about glacier lake outburst floods. Here five reasons are given and you have to find which of them are the reasons for the GLOF. See the correct answer for this question is option D, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. All the factors mentioned here are the reasons for the GLOF. Now I am asking this question because GLOF event happened at Changtang in Sikkim due to bursting of South Lonak Lake. So let's quickly brush up the basics of the glacial lake. See these kinds of lake are formed due to the steadily melting ice at the very top of glaciers. This glacial lake is contained and regulated by dams. However, in the event of a sudden melting or faster than usual melting, this steady release of melt water sufficiently increases. This makes these lakes very unstable resulting in the sudden release of enormous quantities of water, debris and sediments into downstream areas leading to catastrophic flooding. Now this is only called as GLOF. In very simple terms GLOF refers to the rapid drainage of water from a glacial lake irrespective of the causes. See there are both natural causes as well as man-made causes. Some of the natural causes includes glacial retreat due to climate change, volcanoic or geothermal activity, avalanche, earthquake, landslides, glacial moraine failure, glacier lake expansion, then glacier surge See a surge is a sudden acceleration of a glacial flow. This creates new glacial lakes or expanding the existing one. So the resulting pressure can cause the dam to fail. This leads to GLOF. Apart from this, glacial lake overtopping and glacier calving can lead to GLOF. Glacial lake overtopping is nothing but when a glacial lake's water level rises too high, it can overtop the natural dam leading to its erosion and eventual failure. Glacial calving is the breaking of ice chunks from the front of a glacier. These ice chunks can fall into a glacial lake creating waves damaging the natural dam. Apart from this, even intense rainfall or snowfall can increase the volume of water in a glacial lake and this can lead to an increased risk of GLOF. Some of the human activities include mining, construction and other forms of development in mountain areas can cause destabilization of slopes and increase the likelihood of landslides and avalanche leading to GLOFs. So here the correct answer for the question is option D, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 only. 
look at this question about black sea black sea was frequently in news due to the russia ukraine war so it is very important to revise about the black sea and the countries surrounding it now look at this first statement the first statement says black sea is an example of a marginal sea see this statement is actually correct in oceanography a marginal sea is a sea partially enclosed by islands archipelago or peninsulas some of major marginal seas include arabian sea baltic sea bay of bengal bering sea black sea gulf of california gulf of mexico mediterranean sea red sea and all of the four siberian seas which includes barents kara laptev and east siberian so the first statement given here is actually correct and also remember this primary difference between between a marginal sea and open ocean they actually differ with respect to depth and proximity to land masses while marginal sea or generally shallower than open sea they can be easily influenced by human activities river runoff climate and water circulation so moving on to the second statement the second statement says the black sea is connected to the sea of marmara by the strait of ketch and the third statement says the barbosa strait connects the black sea to the sea of azov actually these two statements are interchangeably given as you all know black sea is an inland sea located between far southeast europe and the far western edges of the continent of asia and the country of turkey its bordering countries are romania bulgaria ukraine russia Georgia and Turkey you can remember these countries using a mnemonic T and burger this black sea drains into the mediterranean sea through the aegean sea and various straits actually the strait of kerch it connects the black sea to the sea of azov so the third statement is not correct and the sea of marmara is connected to the black sea through the bosporus strait so the second statement is also not correct so here the question is asking for the incorrect statement second and third statement is alone incorrect so the correct answer for this question is of option c 2 and 3 only look at this question on one side islands are given and on the other side oceans are given you have to correctly match the pairs given here see the correct answer for this question is option b solomon islands is in southwestern pacific falkland island is in atlantic and north senegal is located in indian ocean see i have asked this question on the backdrop of the solomon islands recently a state backed chinese company won a contract to develop a key port in the solomon islands that is why it was in news and subsequently i have asked this question as you can see in this map the solomon islands are a part of melanesia melanesia is like a sub region of oceania in the southwestern pacific ocean remember solomon itself is an island country it consists of six major islands and over 900 small islands in oceania it is situated in the southwestern pacific ocean approximately 2000 kilometers to northwest of australia its capital is honiara which is located on the largest island guadalcanal more than 90% of the islanders are ethnic melanesians it was once a british protectorate and it achieved independence as a republic in 1978 there are 63 distinct languages in the country with numerous local dialects now even though pinyin is the common language for the majority of people english is the official language of the region apart from this recently scientists have detected the presence of avian flu for the first time in the antarctic region this raised concerns for remote population of penguin and seals the falkland island which has the proximity to antarctic region was also under the risk remember this falkland island is an internally self governing overseas territory of the united kingdom in the south atlantic ocean and the north senegal is located in the indian ocean it is part of andaman and nicobar islands so the correct answer for this particular question is option b moving on this question ask you to find which of the rivers flow between india and nepal see the correct answer here is option b 1 2 1 3 only see gagra it is also known as karnali it is a perennial transboundary river which originates on the tibetan plateau near the lake manasarovar the river cuts through the himalayas in nepal and joins the shraddha river at bramagat which is in india then the gandak 
This river is one of the major rivers of uh, Nepal and it lies between the Kosi river system in the east and the Karnali river basin in the west. The Gandak is one of the left bank tributaries of Ganga. Then the Kosi river, it drains the northern slopes of the Himalayas in the Tibetan region. Kamala, Bahmati, Buddhi, Gandak are major tributaries of Kosi in India. Here we can see that all the rivers go through Nepal before coming into India through the Himalayas except Ganges. So the correct answer for this particular question is option B1213 only. So stay tuned for the following videos. It will be posted on every Monday. Use it to revise for your upcoming prelims. So if you like the video, hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Thank you so much for listening.